The cross is the symbol of our forgiveness. The cross. You have been forgiven. And I will give you a very, very um, crucial text today in, in remembering what Christ has done for us. In Colossians, Colossians chapter 2, verse 13 to verse 15. Colossians chapter 2, verse 13 to verse 15. It says here, When you were dead in your sins and in the uncircumcision, um, uncircumcision of your flesh, God made you alive with Christ. He forgave us all, uh, us all our sins, having canceled the charge of our legal in, in debt, indebtedness, which stood against us and condemned us. He has taken it away, nailing it to the cross. Last verse. And having disarmed the powers and authorities, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them by the cross. May the Lord bless the reading of the word. Amen. The title of the message is Forgiveness. Forgiveness. You have been forgiven. And that is the reason why the, the central message of the cross, forgiveness. And it says here in this particular passage of how the Apostle Paul has explained it well. You know, the legal term, the exchange, the redemption that he mentioned uh, there. And also he mentioned about uh, about the powers and authority. So what is that in line with our with the cross and the forgiveness that we receive uh, because of what Christ Jesus has done on the cross? This is the central message for us this afternoon. The central me message for us is Christ's crucifixion made our forgiveness possible. Christ's crucifixion made our forgiveness possible. Because if there is no cross, there is no forgiveness of all of our sins. Christ's cross, his, his nailing on the cross has satisfied. Let me say that again. The cross satisfied the judgment of God. The Lord cannot tolerate he cannot accept imperfection in heaven. The Lord will not allow us to be part of His divine nature because He is a perfect God. And for Him, sin, whether it is small or big, we know that it is sin and it is not acceptable before the throne of God, before the eyes of God, because our God is holy. So the Lord is both just and righteous at the same time he is merciful merciful and compassionate but how can a merciful god tolerate a person who would go to heaven for example by doing good works in despite the imperfection that we have the cross made it possible the cross made it possible for us to be accepted the cross paid everything so this is what uh, the, the message of the Lord for us this afternoon. So what kind of forgiveness that the Lord has given us? I will give us three dimensions when it comes to forgiveness. The first, the first dimension, the kind of forgiveness that God gave us is uh, forgiveness that brings new life. Forgiveness that brings new life. Life. Say that with me. New life. Amen. Forgiveness. You have been forgiven. We have been forgiven. I am forgiven. My past, my present, and my future has been forgiven. As I have, as I have mentioned a while ago, yes, we cannot perfect this life, but the Lord is working out to perfect it. The Lord 
will save us and He will cover us with His righteousness because no one is perfect. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of the Lord and no one is perfect, not even one. But praise the Lord for what He has done. It has made, it is made possible because of the cross. And this forgiveness has given us the opportunity to live a new life. And when we say about the new life that the Apostle Paul has mentioned, we were dead in our transgressions. We were dead in our sins. And in the uh, uncircumcision of our flesh, we are corrupt in our nature, in our flesh. But God made us alive because of Christ. Amen. He made us alive. He forgave us all our sins. Say that with me. All. Not some. All. So you are not forgiven because you pray the sinner's prayer. Because you said one day that Lord, please forgive me of all my sins. I will repent from all of my sins. No. Prayer is a type of good works and you are not saved because you prayed. No. You are saved because you confess Christ Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior. It is not by your religious works. It is not because of your good works. You are saved because of Jesus. You are not saved because you're going to church every Sunday. You are not saved because you're doing the, the, the penitence every Good Friday. Praise God for us believers. We don't do that anymore because we understand that it is not by good works, but it is because of Christ. If we confess that Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior and He is God, we will be saved. For, for it is our heart that we believe and we are saved when we confess that He is our Lord. So we are saved because of His goodness. So He has given us a new life. He has given us, when we speak of new life, he has given us an opportunity. Look at this uh, wonderful illustration of a caterpillar in a metam it metamorphosis uh, process here. You can see from you know, a, a very ugly one into a beautiful uh, butter butterfly. It speaks of the process when the Lord saved us. When the Lord saved us, we are not perfect, but He is changing us from glory to glory. But you have seen the struggle. When you struggle against the flesh, we cannot fight against our flesh because our flesh is sinful in nature. We are not in our heavenly heavenly bodies yet. But praise the Lord, because of what Christ has done, He has given us new life. And when we speak of new life, the Spirit of God enables us to live according to His will. And as we continue to walk in accordance to the Holy Spirit, the gratifying of the sinful flesh, this flesh begins to diminish, diminish day after day, day after day as we walk in accordance to the will of the Lord, His Holy Spirit will empower us and His Holy Spirit will produce the fruit of the Spirit within us and it will enrich our personal lives. It will develop the sort of beatitudes in Matthew chapter 5. You know, the Galatians chapter 5 verse 22, 23, for the fruit of the Holy Spirit it is a reflection of the character of Jesus in the Beatitudes. Love, joy, peace, patience, long-suffering. God is working in us. Although we're, we, when we pray for patience and the Lord will give us a situation, it is like a cocoon. It's like hibernating. But as the Lord changes us from glory to glory, the Lord allows us to realize that this forgiveness, this Grace that the Lord has given us is a very opportunity to be transformed into His likeness. It is a transformation deep within us, deep within, that would, that would be revealed outwardly, from within, outwardly. So, when we speak of forgiveness, you have been given a new life to live with. Praise God. This forgiveness allows us to live a new life. To start all over again. And this, this another opportunity to live a new life, God is, has given us many second chances. 
We may fail today, but the Lord will never fail to pour out His faithfulness upon your life. You know your mistake. You know your misgivings. You know your shortcomings. You know your inabilities. You know your, uh, your, uh, the sin of commission. You know the sin because you don't want to do. The sin of omission. See, everywhere you go, whether you do things or you will not obey, you do nothing about it. It's a sin, but praise the Lord in His presence. The cross has given us an opportunity to live a new life day after day after day after day. And we can see that today will become yesterday. And the Lord has this, this wonderful expectation to all His children to be able to overcome because of that wonderful new life that he gave you. So, so this particular new forgiveness that brings new life, uh, it means that you have been given a new purpose to live. That is why, therefore, the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The new, the old has gone, the new has come. You have been given a new life to live with. You have a new purpose. You have a new direction. You have a new passion. You have a new perspective on things. That is because of forgiveness. For forgiveness, the forgiveness that God has given us, gives us a new perspective in life, a new purpose to live with. When we speak of new life in the Lord, that forgiveness that brings new life, you know, it means there is a new relationship to enjoy. Amen. Relationship to enjoy. And that is part of a new life because forgiveness brings reconciliation. Forgiveness brings new purpose. That's new life. New life, new relationship. New life, new, you know, new uh, angle of calling, you know, your God as, as Father. Jesus as our Savior. That is, that is the reason behind the Apostle John mentioned in 1 John chapter 4, verse 16. Uh, and so we know and rely on the love God has for us. God is love, and whoever lives in love lives in God, and God in them. See this wonderful relationship, and that is the kind of forgiveness that the Lord has given you. The Lord has given us. The Lord allows us to enjoy forgiveness. That particular angle, Lord, thank you, God. It means, Lord, you have forgiven me. And despite of all the knowledge of God, how many of us know that the Lord is an all-knowing God? Amen. He is omniscient. He knows the very beginning and He knows the end. For Him, everything is finished. This, this variable that we call time is just very, it's just like a dot in eternity. Amen. God is all-knowing God. God is all-knowing God. But the Lord, see, He said, He said, when I forgive you, I will remember your sins no more. So it seems like the all-knowing God has a short memory because He will remember your sins no more. Sometimes we could not forgive our sins. We could not accept ourselves for doing such things. And maybe for decades now, that particular mistake haunts you. <laughs> but when you ask, when you mention of God's forgiveness, He will remember your sins no more. See the heart of the Lord. He has given us the chance. He has given us new life. And that is what we mean by forgiveness because of the cross, as what the Apostle Paul said. And sometimes we said in our human nature, I will forgive you. I will forgive you. But I will never trust you again. You, you, are you familiar with that? I will never trust you again. I will forgive you, but I will never forget what you've done. <laughs> you see, in human nature, 
We are not like uh, a chip that uh, you just reformat our brain and our feelings. We will never forget all those bad experiences we had with that person. But praise the Lord. When the Lord said, I forgive you all your sins, He washed it away and He remembered not a single one of it. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! A new relationship to enjoy. A new life to, uh, to live with. Having that particular perspective in life. And uh, of course, you have been given a new purpose to live for. A new purpose to live for. I mentioned that already. But you can see here, the Lord, from the very beginning, He already set that eternity in our hearts. You see, we are not saved by our good works. But when the Lord forgave us, we have that particular purpose in our hearts. He mentioned here in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10, For we are God's handiwork. We are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do good works. See, when the Lord forgave us, we have a new purpose deep within. And maybe one of those good works is to serve. One of those good works is, you know, to be humble. And that is the new purpose that the Lord has set before us from the see, see which God prepared in advance for us to do. From the very beginning of time, you know, the Lord has set that in our hearts. But praise the Lord for the forgiveness. He restored everything. He puts us back into its rightful place. Not because we deserve it, but that is how the Lord uh, done everything, paid everything, or made all things possible because of the cross. Amen. Amen. The second angle of forgiveness is forgiveness that covers everything. Hallelujah. Forgiveness that covers everything. Let me read that again. Colossians verse 14. Having canceled the charge of our legal indebtedness. Wow. Which stood against us and condemned us. He has taken it away Nailing it to the cross. Grabe. Amazing. The kind of forgiveness that covers everything. So it means that, you know, this acts of forgiveness highlights the completeness of God's forgiveness. He forgives you, not, not partially, but He forgives us with a total forgiveness. Amen. Amen. He a forgiveness that covers everything. You see, this kind of forgiveness eradicates all legal demands of sin. It's a total eradication. That even the court of the law, the court in heaven, or even Satan could not count all those sins anymore because it has been satisfied. Hallelujah. When we come to the Lord, the Lord said, Are you burdened? Are you tired? Are you weary? Are you losing hope? Do you need life? Are you, you, you want living water? Do you need comfort? When you come to the Lord, all of those will be answered because when, when you come to the Lord, everything will be given. And that is the kind of forgiveness that He gave us. So, it has been eradicated. Psalms 103 verse 12. As far as the east is from the west, so far has He removed our transgression from us. Hallelujah. He removed it as far as you can. As far as the east is from the west. I don't know what uh, the, the psalmist David thinks about the, how far is the east and from uh, the West, because he is not probably thinking during the time when he wrote the Psalms that the, that the world is round. <laughs> but you see how he expressed his heart according to his understanding that the Lord has totally eradicated all of our sins. And when we face the Lord, you know, God face to face, we are confident not because of what we have done, but because of what Christ has nailed on the cross. 
Jesus had made all these things possible. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Look at this. Not only, you know, this forgiveness, this angle that covers everything, that means eradication of all our sins, the payment has been satisfied. The payment has been satisfied. In Him, we have redemption through His blood. God's grace is not cheap. It's expensive. We have been bought by the blood of the Lamb. The Son has been given. You know what, what does it mean to, to have that name Emmanuel? Emmanuel, do, do, do you know that? The meaning of Emmanuel? There is also a three dimension of the name Emmanuel. God with us. God like us. He stooped down, became like us. God with us, God like us. The third one, God is for us. God with us, God like us, God is for us. He fights for us. He paid it. He satisfied the justice of having sin. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God in Christ Jesus is eternal life. In Him we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches. How rich is the grace of God. I understand what forgiveness is. So even if I lay my life, if I'll die in action, I don't know what kind of death, you know, the Lord will give me. It's in His hand. But whether I'll, I will die in my comfort, I will die in action, or I will die in sickness, the Lord still deserves all the glory and honor and praises and adoration and all power and everything that I have is for Him to be honored. That's how beautiful the name of our God is. The cross, because of the cross, our forgiveness has been made possible. The third angle of that forgiveness, and I like this, is that kind of forgiveness. Forgiveness that disarms the power or powers and authorities. Amazing. See, forgiveness, that's the first one, forgiveness that brings new life, forgiveness that covers everything. And the third one, the third dimension is forgiveness that disarms the power of darkness. I would read again Colossians chapter, chapter 2, verse 15, our text, and having disarmed, wow, having disarmed the powers and authorities, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them by the cross. How powerful it is. For the wisdom of man, the cross is like foolishness. The, the Greeks asked for what kind of, of wisdom in that cross. It's foolishness for the Jew. What sign do you have in the cross? But for us, the cross is the power that brings breakthrough in your life and in my life. See, it has been mentioned here, and having disarmed the powers and authorities, he made a public spectacle of them. For us, looking at the Lord, nailing on the cross, it's a shame, but actually not. It's the other way around. The cross brings shame to all the powers and authorities. It brings all the shame of the enemy. So for us, when we mention about this forgiveness that brings, that brings, uh, that disarms power and uh, authorities, it means that there's no more shame. We can rise up. Despite of all your limitations, despite of probably thinking of all your misgivings, the Lord can use you and He can allow your power to flow in and through you. That's how 
powerful and how gracious the Lord is. The disciples didn't share that particular perspective. When the apostle Peter went, Peter went into the house of Cornelius, he, he thought that the Holy Spirit is only for them. The Gentiles were not, were not qualified to receive the power of the Holy Spirit, but praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. He poured out His Holy Spirit upon us all so that He will he will allow His power and the demonstration of His love to be experienced by us. It says here um, in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 8, So do not be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord of, or of me, His prisoner. Rather, join with me in suffering for the gospel by the power of God. You know, as the Lord disarms authorities and powers, as the Lord pulls down the, you know, the, the enemy's uh, uh, schemes, the enemy's intimidation, the enemy's lies in our lives, you know, the Apostle Paul reminded Timothy that do not be ashamed. If you are suffering for the gospel, do not be ashamed. Because why? It will all the more display the power of of God. The Lord has not given you, you know, a spirit of fear. Later on, we'll, I will be sharing that because why? Not only you have no shame, no more shame, because it's the enemy who is ashamed now. It's the enemy who, is being, who has been intimidated now, but, but there is also no more intimidation from the lies of the enemy. The Lord is my light. The Lord is my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? No more shame. He disarms the power and authorities, the power of darkness, all lies. There is no more uh, intimidation and there is no more fear. I mentioned that a while ago, for the Spirit of God does not make us timid, but gives us power, love, and self-discipline. That is the power of the cross. Brings shame to the enemy. Brings new life and relationship to enjoy. And brings or, or covers all our sins. Everything has been paid off. And lastly, this forgiveness disarms powers and Authority. Are you not blessed of seeing that powerful cross of Christ? Why, why healing is still taking place in our midst? Why the Lord still perform, performs His power? Because why divine healing is part of of disarming powers and authority. Why forgiveness? Why, why, why healing still happens? Because why healing foreshadows the complete restoration that we have in the Lord that is forgiveness. One time I prayed for, for a person who has, suf who has suffered uh, a third third stage cancer and uh, before before I prayed for the person I asked uh, how she is and how's the family and how's her heart and how's her situation and all that and I keep on asking and then uh, exhortation encouragement later on it came out that she has uh, unforgiveness in her in her heart she was she was uh, she has this bitterness for the longest time against her father uh, abusive father later on when she got married she has an abusive husband and she has this bitterness in, in her heart I said the Lord has forgiven you and if you cannot forgive people the Lord will also not forgive you why don't we take time to just release all those unforgiveness in your heart and then she began to release all the, those unforgiveness and you know what she has been healed from the stage 3 cancer. There's, there's a person is in, in his dying, dying bed. 
in the province. And then the, the family asked me to pray. And before I asked, pray because he's about to die. So I said, how are you? How's your heart? Are you angry at the Lord uh, right now? I said, yes, I'm angry. Why are you angry at God? And then he mentioned all these things. Because of the people around, because this, this, and that. Then I explained to, to him the love of God. <laughs> you know, the family has already prepared all the funeral things. But when, when he has been convinced that he needs to release forgiveness, praise the Lord, the Lord extended his life for another three years. <laughs> the power of forgiveness reconciles us, gives us new life. Gives us new purpose. The power of forgiveness cancels everything. And because we know that everything has been canceled, we are free. We can, we can freely serve Him. We can freely worship Him. We can freely come before His throne as we are. You know, the Lord Jesus on the cross, seeing those abusive religious leaders and the Roman soldiers who punished him and those Jewish people who experienced the feeding of the 5,000 were there laughing at him laughing at him you see the forgiveness of the Lord he just cried Father forgive them for they do not know what they do the forgiveness of God covers everything And you may think you are living in fear. You are living in intimidation. You are living crippled because if you are afraid, afraid of yourself, afraid of the future, afraid of what's going to happen, that is not the kind of forgiveness that God gave you. The kind of forgiveness that God gave you disarms all authorities. It gives assurance. It, gives, it brings confidence. It allows you to rise. It allows you to say, Lord, here I am. I'm not perfect, but Lord, you can use me. The Lord can use a criminal. David is an adulterer. You have seen all those people with flaws, but the Lord, you know, allow them to understand. Psalms 103, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless His holy name. Bless the Lord, all my souls, and forget not all the benefits. He healed all my diseases. He saved my life from the pit. The Lord renews my strength day after day. See how wonderful it is. David said, as far as the east is from the west, so far as he removes, he removes our sins from us. His love is from everlasting. You see, if we come to the Lord with all the confidence, he said, if you would just come, I will bless, you know, I will bless you and the thousand generations after you. Because that's the love of the Lord. It goes from everlasting to everlasting. He mentioned there, the, the psalmist David, he mentioned there, that what, what kind of people are we? We're just like dust. We will just suddenly disappear. But His love is from everlasting to everlasting. Even if you're not around anymore, His love continues from generation to generation. How forgiving the Lord is. Even if we sin, He will only curse up to fourth generation. But to those He loves, He will bless a thousand generations. It will disarm the power of darkness and authorities. And tonight, maybe something that you couldn't forgive in your heart, look on to Jesus and tell Lord I just release myself to you God I, want, I would like to surrender maybe you have a situation Lord your forgiveness brings healing Lord I think oh God I have bitterness Lord with, with some people just release yeah, that forgiveness and Lord I will have a new life and relationship to enjoy with there's a lot of things attached when you, when you speak of the cross and forgiveness